World famous Butch and Bob Show right here on WIFO 105.5 FM and Jess, a big dog country radio. And Bob, we've got a very special guest this morning here on the show. I yeah, normally have him on Mondays. Mondays with Stephen Meeks, but Stephen was all tied up Monday, so we've got him here on Friday. Stephen, appreciate you calling in. How's everything going Absolutely. with you? Absolutely. Great uh, Great to be back on the air. and appreciate the opportunity. Everything's going uh, been, it's going great. It's been a really busy week. A lot of lot of stuff happening with uh, committee meetings and appropriations and uh, visitors coming to town. So it's uh, it's been a really busy week, and we uh, next week will be busy as well. We'll have uh, leadership Wayne uh, in town next week. We've got Alma and Bacon County coming up to do their uh, longtime cookout on uh, Tuesday. So we'll. Uh, it's been busy. A lot of folks coming through, and uh, a lot of uh, a lot of committee work happening. You must have been really tied up on Monday because I know how much you love the Butch and Bob show. So the day just for it must have been important meetings. <laughs> I, I do. It's uh, I I really I really enjoy kicking my week off with you guys. Quite honestly, and the listeners, um, it, it just it makes my my week so much better. But we uh, we started committee meetings uh, 8 a.m. every day last week and um, trying to get the amended FY24 amended budget. Uh, uh, put together, which we will have on the floor on February the fourth. Uh, so a lot of uh, a lot of those meetings will take place starting at 8 a.m. So we got so many subcommittees within appropriations that have to spread them out and securing the rooms and locations and, and uh, all that kind of good stuff. So um, so it starts early on Monday mornings than it used to. Well, when you and Lake Tillery and Buddy Deloach were at eggs and issues to kick off the. Before you went to the legislative session, it was discussed about this anti-Semitism, and again, that was passed yesterday. Both the Senate and the House, uh, you know, the measure in the Senate, 44 to 6, followed by a quick 129 to 5 vote in the House, expected to go to the governor's desk for expected signature. So, your thoughts on that? Right. Yeah, it was one that we uh, we passed last year. Uh, got tied up in the Senate for one reason or another, and. Uh, they made some revisions to it and um, sent it back to us yesterday. And um, so we, so they passed it yesterday morning. We actually finished business before they did it. So we recessed until they got it out um, to get it back over to us. And it really just defines I and mean, puts a definition in in law of uh, anti-Semitism and um, doesn't change free speech or anything of that nature. It just you know adds a definition to it unless violent acts are are um are committed and you know within this form of that language then there's nothing you know it, it, it protects the free speech so that's what we did and uh, passed it and after some debate um and then said it'll go to the governor and uh, for his signature you've just joined us on the phone as representative Stephen meeks uh legalized sports betting once again <laughs> being discussed. Normally it's a long shot, but they're saying that the owners of the Braves, the Hawks, uh, the soccer team, all up there pushing it. So what are they going to do? Give you all free tickets to the Braves games to get a pass? Or what's going on over there? Well, I don't know if they've offered season passes or not. I haven't heard that, but I did see this week over in the Senate uh, they picked up some support from a couple other folks they had not previously had support from. So We'll uh, continue to follow that to see what happens. And, uh, you know, Bob, I don't know. If I was betting, man, it's probably still 50-50 this shot at this point. I don't <laughs> yeah, know. That's what I'm saying. Well, it's 50, 50, 50 is better than 80-20 again. But uh, what's funny is the Atlanta Chamber of Commerce is getting behind this, but uh, also the Braves president was on hand. CEO Derek Schiller says he uh, needs a pass. He says it employs a lot of people. and. All these other sport teams are allowed. And, you know, you see it on Sunday NFL. I mean, Fox Sports, and they. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's everywhere. So uh, they said yeah, the money. You know, you said it. Uh, this has been discussed years past, and every year you said that you know what they do is they they give you that incentive that's going to go towards education. You know, the pre K and Hope Scholarship. Right. So that's how yeah. they try to you know get it passed. So you th see it getting any traction? Like I said, right now it's probably fifty fifty. I'd say right now it's still 50-50. I haven't had any conversations personally about it, you know, and following what was happening over in the Senate. Um, 
I suspect they'll probably do something. Again, it's one of those you just don't know where it's going to go, and you're right. Um, you do during NFL Sundays, and um, you're, you're seeing more and more advertisement. Uh, but, you know, how do you put guardrails on there for those who are, who are um, you know, not of age to gamble, or do you put an age on it? You know, and, and a lot of that is very difficult online, so I think we have to be cognizant of that. You know, with with that conversation as as the conversation moves forward, but you know, I'd say it's still probably fifty fifty right now on, on where we go uh, this time, and uh, and it'll be interesting. And I know you guys or probably have some of the same thoughts as much of what you just said is, you know, where do the proceeds go when they've gone from everything from you know incentives for rural Georgia uh, to uh, to pre K to lottery, you know, education. I mean, a whole gambit of I mean, it's like a different – it goes to a different pot every time we have a different version. Um, so it'll be uh, be interesting to see what they do this year uh, with a uh, with a draft and uh, moving forward. I saw where Buddy Carter, our congressman, was in the Georgia Capitol this week testifying on, in front of the House and Human Services Committee on House Bill 343, a bipartisan bill that's meant to lower prescription drug costs. Were you on hand for that? I was not. Uh, I heard about that after the fact. I was tied up in appropriation meetings, and um, I didn't didn't see him here. Um, but I did pick up a little bit of conversation on that uh, on that hearing. But I didn't see him, no, sir. Yeah, it's interesting. They said that he's trying to do the same thing up in Washington. He's got a unusual ally in Bernie Sanders. So I can't wait to talk, <laughs> can't wait to uh, see Buddy again. And ask him about that. So, but uh, I'd I mention this to Blake. I have had a lot of callers. Uh, uh, Talk to me when they they said when I talked to you guys they they're disappointed that the governor backed down on tort reform. So where do you stand on that? What happened there? Well, I don't. You know that happened on about day two of the legis of the session, and everybody you know was kind of scratching their head, you know, trying to figure out what that was about. We do have um, a couple of members. Another lieutenant governor has indicated he'd like to move forward with something. And we've got some members over here who have interest. And, um, and moving forward with it. And the more it gets talked about, the more uh, different aspects of the impact that tort reform would have on our economy uh, comes forward and, and you hear more and more about it. Um, I think we'll probably see something eventually, how far it gets down the road and, you know, what does the governor do if it makes it to his desk? I'm uncertain. Uh, but it sounded like he wanted to slow down the process and, and you know, take a slower pace to getting there, uh, but it's it's one of the things that we do need to take a look at because it has a huge impact on operating expense, our economy, um, and citizens all across in terms of insurance premiums that are paid, et cetera. Um, so we, we do need to take a look at that, and I think we'll, we'll have members uh, drafting some. I know uh, uh, Representative Clay Parker from down in Ashburn uh, is working on a bill, and I don't I believe that uh, there is one being worked on in the Senate as well. Once again, just joining us on the phone with us is State Representative Stephen Meeks. Uh, you were good friends with Blake. We had Blake on Tuesday. He talks about you know the budget's the big thing. So, how's the budget process going? I know you and him are good friends. It's uh, it's going well. Um, we are in the process of putting together the amended budget uh, for which is the mid-year budget as we refer to it uh, up here and. And as the governor had previously mentioned, that eggs and issues, excuse me, with the Georgia Chamber, you know, some, some good things in it, and hopefully, you know, we're cognizant of what the needs are across our state as we um, do um, look at ways to to put resources where they need to be with a, uh, a surplus that's at record levels, uh, thanks to a good economy in, in our state. and. Some of the things that we're looking at doing that. So some, a lot of it will go to uh, economic development. I know we're putting uh, $100 million for uh, rural economic development projects and other grant opportunities and for rural sites, rural development sites. And then, you know, many of our communities received funding a um, year or so ago from some of the federal money that came down during COVID. Um, but a lot of that was directed toward infrastructure. And as we know, particularly, you know, in our case in Wayne County and City of Jessup, uh, we received one that was about $6 million, uh, for a project, and now the, the estimated cost of that project is, 
you know, $21 million. So we were able to put, or the governor indicated he'd like to put $250 million into the Georgia Environmental Facilities Finance Authority uh, that would, for low interest loans to communities to help make up that difference as an avenue if, if needed uh, to finish some of those projects. So we're, we're trying to make strategic investments across our state. Our farmers markets, the one particularly here in Atlanta, uh, have not had any upgrades in, in many, many years, um, which is a hub for produce coming from all over our state and vendors, uh, restaurant chains, et cetera, that will buy produce there um, every day of the week during the growing season. So it's a, a very um, a large facility just south of Atlanta, just south of the airport. And, you know, so making those kinds of investments across our state are, are very important. And, you know, as we, we talk about, you know, pay raises for, um, for state employees, for school teachers, uh, for law enforcement officers, you know, we've, we've got to continue to make those investments. You know, the state, you know, government is, is a business, and we have to think about it in, in those terms while we're balancing our, our budget as we are uh, mandated to do. But also uh, incentives for employees to, to remain on board. Um, you know, we've gotten a lot of the baby boomer generation is retiring, and we've got to be able to replace um, uh, and keep growing in terms of keeping uh, sufficient staff employed to uh, meet the needs of Georgians. So, you know, getting pay up for some of the state jobs uh, all across our state is very important. We're working hard to do that and do it in a strategic way and even providing some funding for our uh, retired state employees that have not seen a COLA in several years. So we're trying to you know, make sure we're taking uh, strategic steps and addressing the uh, needs across our state. But the amended budget's coming together. Um, we will have uh, several meetings on Monday back-to-back -back, uh, to finish up any Items and I believe the chairman has indicated February the fourth he would like to have this on the um, on the floor to go ahead and get it out and get it to the Senate and then we'll move on to uh, the bigger budget the 25 budget and start work work on that as well so it's uh, it's coming together. Any other hot topics that we need to be aware of coming up? <laughs> it seems like it depends on the day of, of what's <laughs> happening. Uh, Budget, uh, budget's a big one. You know, we've got some um, some within agriculture that we've talked about, and we've heard some uh, from individuals across our state that uh, large animal veterinarians are um, are at a premium right now, and there are very few across our states. We're trying to figure out you know ways that we can work to address you know recruiting large animal vets to uh, to rural Georgia. We've got some great veterinarians. Uh, Know, that, that do small animal and um, and but there seems to be uh, in some areas a challenge of recruiting uh, veterinarians. Not something you really think about, uh, but very important across our state. So we'll uh, continue to work on uh, great things like that. We've got some other. Uh, I think Mayor Jason Weaver's got some local legislation that uh, he wants us to work on for him and extending the city limits of. The, city of um, Screven. So we got uh, we got several things to work on, hot topics. You know, I'd, we'll, we'll have some pop up from day to day is what it seems like on uh, where we're going. But those are some that we'll be working on as we move forward. And, again, just, you know, making sure that, um, you know, one, we'll be reducing the uh, state income tax. And we've talked about that from time to time and getting that down from um, 5.75 down to 4.99. And, and really returning uh, hard-working taxpayer money to the citizens of Georgia. It's, uh, it's your money, and we need to, uh, to return that to, uh, and, and further reduce that income tax rate as we, uh, as we move forward. So a lot of good things happening, uh, thanks to a great economy where we've got, some, we've got the ability to, uh, to move some money around and do great things for our states, and look forward to continuing to work to do that. And again, you're always accessible. Uh, again, if somebody's out there listening, they want to get a hold of Stephen Meeks during the legislative session. How they, what's the best way to get a hold of you? Uh, email at stephen.meeks at house.ga.gov, uh, or my cell is 912-207-0813, and uh, 
and I certainly appreciate the opportunity to serve the 178th district at home in Wayne County, and um, just appreciate the opportunity to uh, spend, spend a, little, a little time with you guys on this Friday morning. Hey, always good to have you. We're going to get you back on Monday, but or, but yes, sir. Okay. I, that, that's my you plan. will be okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I just want to check because we just had your Friday, but a lot goes on yeah, over the weekend, we'll, uh, so we'll get you back on Monday. That'll be good. Absolutely, absolutely. Right. Appreciate the opportunity. All right, Stephen. You have a great weekend. Thank y'all. y'all have a good day. Take, Take care. care. All right. State Representative Stephen Meeks, our special guest this morning here on the World Famous Butch and Bob Show here on WIFO one hundred five point five FM, and Jessa, it's good for him to insist on being on Friday when he could have just waited to Monday since he missed this Monday because of uh, of meetings. He he likes being on the show and uh, just like Blake does and Buddy does, and so it's good to have our two state representatives and a state senator enjoy being on the Butch and Bob show uh, most every week that they're in session. We appreciate it. And most appreciative, of course, should be our listeners out there who get to hear what their elected officials say. What's going on out there? What are they doing up there under the gold dome? You know, when they first start off up there um, in the first few weeks, there's all these gathering and get togethers, you know, this, uh-huh. the barbecue, this, the breakfast, that, the dinner, this, the, you know, the, the, and the, there's so many social functions for them to go to for the first couple of weeks that a ses- that you get in session up there. It's amazing they can get anything done, but there's a lot of, a lot of social things that go on. Well, as you mentioned, the group of Wayne County going up there next weekend, leadership Wayne's going up there right. to visit. So I saw Dale Keith yesterday. He's going up there as well. So, a lot of people from Wayne County hit up to Atlanta this right. week. Yep. I used to do that years ago. Um, we, uh, we actually had a Wayne County day up there. And so, um, so um, uh, I mean, it's good to do that. You've, you know, it's, it's always, you know, you've got to create those personal relationships. Uh, and, uh, and when you go to these functions, not only do you get to see the, 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 the three, but in many of them you've got uh, a, a bigger event going on, so you get to see other state legislatures uh you get to see department heads other officials that you can develop those relationships with when you may need them for something just never can tell we expecting somebody else to hear the doorbell? i didn't expect anybody this morning i mean it's uh 20 minutes after eight o'clock the doorbell just rang i didn't expect anybody to come in do you want to go up there and uh, I think it's probably something to do not with the Butch and Bob show because yeah, I didn't expect the Butch and Bob show. If they were going to be on the Butch and Bob show, they would have been here at, at 8 o'clock, right. not at 8.20. My gosh. Yeah. And so um, uh, I didn't expect him to be, to be on the Butch and Bob show this morning. Our doorbell just rang, but it's only me and Bob, and we're sitting here flapping our jaws on the radio. So <laughs> we'd have to stop talking to go answer the door, and we can't do that because we're talking on the radio. So you're going with the home teams when it comes to the championship weekend, huh? Yeah, it paid dividends last week, three and one, and I said I think both. I just Kansas City is hard to pull against them. I love Mahomes and Andy Reid, but I think Baltimore's defense is just too good, and plus they're at home, and Lamar Jackson's flourished under Todd Munkin. So I'm going with the home teams. I still yeah, think San Francisco chink in the armor a little bit this uh, this year in uh, Kansas City. So. They're going to be uh, beaten. This is this is this is the year four because they're playing, you know, the team with the best record. I tell you, six straight ASC title games. That's that's impressive though. And Patrick Mahomes is fun to watch. And I said Andy Reid's one of the best coaches. Travis Kelsey had a great game last weekend, so they played their best game. But I said Baltimore at home with that defense. And mm-hmm. I got to go with defense. Defense wins championships. Defense wins. And the Cinderella story is coming to yeah. an end against the And it's 49ers. hard to pull against the Lions. I, I would love to see the Lions in the Super Bowl. That would be a great story. I mean, those poor fans for years, you know. Barry Sanders retired early, you know. That's, yeah. that's what you remember Detroit being relevant when Barry Sanders was running. Right. But they couldn't ever get anywhere. But the, for them to be one game away from the Super Bowl, that would be a heck of a story. But they're playing – I still – I've had San Francisco all year as the best team. I still think San Francisco is the best team. Christian McCaffrey, ever since they picked him up, they've got all those weapons. And Brock Purdy's a great story. And Mr. Irrelevant playing well. So, I got I got the home teams winning this weekend. Okay. All right. And then two weeks after that will be the Super Bowl. Super Bowl. Bowl. Yep. In Vegas. That ought to be fun. Ought to be fun. Oh, yeah. Vegas. You, know, they build, you build a new stadium, they'll put you a Super Bowl there. And that's uh-huh. what's happening there. They build that new stadium there. So, 
you got this weekend, uh, the 27th championship weekend, and then Super Bowl weekend coming up on February, what is that? 11th. Uh, 11th. 11th, yeah. This, the Pro Bowl would be next Sunday. They throw the Pro Bowl when they're down in Orlando. So, But they got all their on skills challenge. You know. you know, what they've got to do, Bob, now, we've talked about this each year, and we just need to get maybe a national uh, – uh, uh, maybe a, a national campaign on this is the one week after that is President's Day weekend. All right, President's Day holiday is a national holiday. Okay, if we could if we could just get them to add, just add another week, uh, the Monday after then Super the Bowl Monday should after be a, Super Bowl be would be a holiday. It It'd be, be President's holiday. Day. It's already a holiday. All they got to do is just somehow stretch it out one more week you know give the teams another week off during the course of the year i mean they're already got it playing now for you know what 18 games 17 games whatever it is now and uh so all you got to do is just you know give them another week off give them another week another week of rest and have the super bowl on the sunday before President's, President's Day, Day. Yeah. and that way, that's a national holiday, holiday. Don't it all. and people get have off on the, on the Monday after Super Bowl. It's just one week, you know, it's no, we're not we're tr- trying to stretch it out the two or three weeks, it's just one week, and um, they, they just won't do it. <laughs> Surprise, the Falcons passed on Arthur, or on Belichick. Belichick looks like he can't find a job. I, I think mean, he wants too much control. I think he, I mean, you know, he's, the, he's the goat. They don't want he the goat. He is the goat, but you know, it's not what you did for me yesterday. It's what can you do for me today? And they just don't think he still got it, or he wants to have total total control. And other people in the front offices, the GMs and other folks say, you know, oh, you know, we don't want this control taken away from us. I think Brady's blackballing. Him. That's what I think it is. You think Brady? <laughs> I don't think Brady. I, has think, a, I, I think, think Brady's got better things to worry about than. How about Bill Brady back with his wife, him and Gazelle back together? They are. Yeah. When did this happen? I, I, I you haven't watch, been under rock. You don't watch entertainment tonight. No, I don't watch entertainment tonight. But <laughs> they're back you know, together. I, 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 I do read social st- not social media, but you know uh, stuff on the internet. Brady that's got and Gazelle this, uh, entertainment news reunited. On you got to be kidding me. No. Suffice. Are you sure? Positive. That's what I, I'm, I'm just going. What I've seen. You, see, you saw it on Entertainment Tonight. I saw it on Entertainment Tonight. Well, that's pretty respectable. Hollywood Access, all that good stuff. You know. But TM did TMZ have it? <laughs> I, I don't. I didn't check TMZ. I heard Brady and his wife got back together. Happy for him. Well, I'll be dipped. He still. Eating that crazy ice cream. What is it? Uh, that's, I, mean, I don't know. I he, thought he was dating a younger supermodel now. I'm just going on what I saw on TV. Huh. Good line. Entertainment Tonight. Well, Brady, I, I, I didn't Brady know that. Brady Gazelle Bob. reunited. Reunited. Absolutely amazing. I had no idea. But I think he's calling these teams and saying, you don't want Belichick. <laughs> I don't think. I think that's what he's doing. I, I think don't think he's doing but that. The funniest thing. I think he's got better the, things to the do. The funniest thing they're Bill saying, Belichick. Belichick's going to get a job on TV. That that guy's the most boring guy in the world. What's no, he going to no, no, what's, no, what's, no, no. bring to the TV? You know, I've heard some interviews on our, you know, our, our, as people well know, our sister station, Wayne County's Heritage Radio Station, WLOP, Fox, it's Fox Sports Radio, 1370 AM, The Buzz, WLOP is Sports talk all the time, 24 hours a day. If you like sports, you'll love listening to 1370 on your AM dial, Fox Sports Radio. And, uh, and you and you know, folks like you know, Jim Rome or Dan Patrick or Rich Eisen or somebody, they'll, they'll interview folks from, um, uh, from some of the former players of, um, of the New England Patriots. And they say, well, what is Bill like when he's, you know, when he's not on the, in front of the mic and stuff like that, and they say that he can be a you know pretty fun loving guy, you know, party around a little bit, joke around a little bit, have a couple of brewskis with the guys and and stuff like that, and it's just that when he gets in front of that mic, uh, uh, he just he becomes Mister Boring. <laughs> I mean, he's not like a let's go. He's not a party animal. Let's just put it that way. But he's a lot looser. He's uh, he can hang with the guys and have fun with them and stuff like that and and, and joke around. 
And uh, well, so, I think it's good he's not going to have a job, you know, saving retired. Him and saving good friends so they can just go fish and hunt and play golf together. So, well, yeah, they can buddy around together. So Saban and, and Saban, Saban and Belichick can bay better yeah, together. Yeah, they're good friends. So they are. Huh? They can hang out together. Okay. But when they said he's going to get a job in TV, I said that's going to be not Gronkowski's entertaining. Now, <laughs> yeah, Ron's entertaining. Let me tell you, I don't, he I don't is see, entertaining I don't, I don't big see, time. I don't see Belichick getting a lot of ratings. <laughs> no, no, uh, yeah, I, I, I don't know what he would do. He'd have to, he'd have to get with a PR firm and folks like that to try to try to, you know. Excitement, put some excitement in his image. Have you ever seen? He's him got s- the knowledge. We uh-huh. all know he has the knowledge. I've never seen him smile. You ever seen him smile? I don't think. I he's can't ever say smiled. I ever have. I don't think he's ever. <laughs> <laughs> After his Super Bowl win, that's one of that's one of the things that uh, one of the players were talking about. That when that that uh, that is when he will let his hair down and uh, have a good time. Is at the end of the season with a Super Bowl win. He is so focused, beginning in June all the way up until the Super Bowl victory. That, that that's all he's focused on. And then if he wins that Super Bowl, you've seen him the pictures and so forth. He's smiling. He's having a good time. That is when he'll actually let his hair down and have a good time. Is after the season's over with with a with a Super Bowl victory. If he doesn't have a Super Bowl victory. He starts thinking about the next year and what he can do to to win again. Just surprised. I said Arthur Blank seemed to want him. Interviewed him twice, but like I said, the story is that several people in the front office didn't want him to come. And when he said he needed certain people fired, Arthur Blank was lured to those people he wanted fired and said, nah, I'll keep those people and find somebody else. So Raheem Morse, the new coach in Atlanta. Is that better than what they had there? So, I have I tell, no I tell idea. You, it's easy to fire somebody. The question is, what are you getting? You know, what are you going to get in return? Yeah. yeah. I mean, this guy's um, bounced around like a lot of the other uh, uh, NFL I mean, coaches. So, hopefully there's some chemistry there and he'll do well with the Falcons. Let's hope. That's all we can do is hope. You just don't know. But, uh, you know, coaches, uh, old coaches like uh, Bill Belichick and, and, and older players – Sometimes they just sit back and wait and, until they get that phone call because some owner needs them as a, as a player or as a coach. So I've um, got a feeling that, that sometime within the next year, uh, Bill will be getting a call saying, we need your expertise. I don't know. If he doesn't coach this year, I don't see him getting it. You don't so, see him? No. And you know, the reason he wants to coach, he's like three or four games behind. Don't 15. Sure, you know, is it that many? It's 15 yeah. games. That's what he wants. He wants he, to break that record. He wants to break Don Shula's right, right record. So, but doesn't look like that's going to happen. Yeah, maybe not. And I'm, I'm glad he's not because I, I, I really like Don Shula. I was a big Dolphins fan back in the '70s. Those are some good teams. I'm good teams. Zonka, Mercury Morris, mm-hmm. Bob Greasy. Yep. Yep. All those guys. All right, Bob. Anything else? I uh, just want to remind people about that railroad crossing it is closed. The one on Sunset Boulevard was closed this morning at, night, at 6 a.m. They said it'll be closed for approximately two to four days as they're repaving it. They're supposed to do that Monday, so they say it should be reopened around 5 p.m. Monday. So keep that so in mind. So which one? The one, one out there towards yeah. the, country, you know, the CSX. Is, that's on, up there. The, is it the one that's closed? On to Sunset the, Boulevard, up by the Country Club. They're going towards Country Club. Okay, I know, yeah, but there's so, two so, tracks there. There's one right there, you know, where Healthy Pet is, and there's one down there at the Country Club. So There's two of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you ride down Sunset Boulevard all the I time, Bob. You go across two railroad tracks. You've only been yeah. doing it for like 30-something years. Yeah. Tell you what I know. <laughs> <laughs> I, it just says CSX closed. It's uh, the one on Sunset Boulevard. That's all it says. Okay, so go, one of those two is closed. Yeah, I think it's the one closest to the Country Club because okay. I saw the road when I was coming so, up Country Club last night. It said the road closed. So oh, okay. I think, I think it's the closest one. The closest one there, the one that heads down to Jacksonville, not the one that heads to Waycross. <laughs> if you say so. <laughs> Just know that one of those railroad tracks is closed on Sunset Boulevard, so if you're going to go down Sunset Boulevard, you're going to have to figure a way to get around for the next few days until right. next Tuesday morning. Right. All right. Well, Bob, have a good day. All right. The world famous Butch and Bob show here on WIFO 105.5 FM in Jessup. And it's brought to you by First Southern Bank, by Vans Barbecue, Murphy Builder Supply, and O'Quinn and Associates.